What is up all my lovely subjects? It's Master Salazar here. And today, I'm giving my lovely subjects a story time of how I got into Black Veil Brides. Uh, surprise, surprise. Megan was the one who told me about them because she found them and the only song she ever played for me by them was Fallen Angels from the Set the World on Fire album. But then a few years after that, thanks to my ex-friend Ashley, uh, who I met through one of my other ex-friends, uh, she started talking to me about them a lot more, and then I started listening to more of their music. I did just recently listen to every single one of their albums before they released their most recent EP, the Night EP. Uh, so I'm going to go through each of these and talk about which songs I knew before I listened to it and what songs I like from them. The usual routine with this. Let's start with this Rebels record that they released. Um... I know this isn't like a first thing that they released, but it's sort of like an EP, I guess, for them. I don't know if it's technically supposed to be an EP, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to call it The Rebel's Record. The only song I knew from this before I listened to all three songs on it was Coffin. And that is actually my favorite song from this. I kind of like their cover of Rebel Yell by Billy Idol. And I like Unholy. That was a really good song, too. Uh, okay, let's go in with We Stitch These Wounds, the first thing they released. Uh, before I listened to this whole thing a few months ago, I knew the opening track, The Outcasts, Call to Arms, only because of the fact that they used the opening for this album in the beginning of the music video for Perfect Weapon. So I knew The Outcasts, Perfect Weapon, Knives and Pens, and the mortician's daughter before I listened to this whole album. My favorite song from this album is The Mortician's Daughter, because it's the most beautiful Black Bell Bride song I've ever heard. It's amazing, and I love Andy for writing that song. That's all I can say about We Stitch These Wounds. So let's go in with Set the World on Fire. Before I listened to all of this, I knew Fallen Angels and Rebel Love Song. I think my favorite song from this album would probably be Love Isn't Always Fair or New Religion. One of those two. But I also do like Set the World on Fire and Fallen Angels and... God Bless You and Rebel Love Song and The Legacy and Die For You and Youth and Whiskey. That's most of this freaking album. Set the World on Fire was originally... I knew most of... Okay, that's not true. I was about to say... I knew most of Set the World on Fire before I listened to it, but that's not true. Um, I thought when I was listening to every single album that Black Veil Brides had released after they released Veil, vale, I thought that Set the World on Fire was going to end up becoming my favorite Black Veil Brides album because it's amazing, but it's not because I'm going to get into what my favorite album is in a little bit, but... 
it, I guess now it's my second favorite album. Okay, let's go in with the Wretched and Divine album. Before I listened to this whole thing a few months ago, I knew I Am Bulletproof, Devil's Choir, Lost It All, and In The End. Then after listening to this whole thing, I became obsessed with the song Resurrect the Sun. I don't know why, but I totally love Black Bell Bride's song Resurrect the Sun. It's freaking beautiful. But before that, from the songs that I knew before I listened to the entire Wretched and Divine album, my favorite song from the songs I knew was Devil's Choir. Now let's go in with the self-titled Black Bell Rides record. The only song that I actually knew before I listened to this entire album is the opening track, Heart of Fire. I don't know. I just... I don't know why, just something in my mind didn't let me listen to every Black Veil Brides album until after they had released Veil, before they released the Night EP. So that's part of the reason why the only song I knew from the self-titled Black Veil Brides record was Heart of Fire. But after listening to the entire album, I can say that I love Heart of Fire and Faithless and Last Rites. I love Stolen Omen and Walk Away and The Shattered God. My favorite song from this album would either be... It's a tie between Heart of Fire and The Shattered God. Because those are both really good songs. And now we have Veil. Vale. Well, no. Okay, as every Black Veil Brides fan knows, after the release of the Black Veil Brides self-titled album, sometime after that, they broke up, and during that time, Jake Pitts started... Well, actually, no. Well, I think he started Alonia with his wife while they were broken up. Well, Black Bell Brides was broken up, but they didn't really start releasing music until after Black Bell Brides got back together in 2016. Because... The self-titled Black Veil Brides album was released in 2014, I believe. Yeah, I think it was 2014, and then they broke up, and Andy went on to do Andy Black for a while, and then they got back together, and they started releasing singles for Veil. Which is my favorite album from them. I'm not sure if the way I'm about to describe this is right. But I think... Someone tell me if I'm wrong. Because I know for a fact I probably have some Black Veil Brides fans that watch my channel. Someone... Please tell me if I'm wrong. I think the order and the way they released singles for this album was... First, it was The Outsider. I know that for a fact. Because Lindsay was the one who told me that they had gotten back together in... It was like 2017 when I heard The Outsider, but they released it in 2016. But... 
like a year later, Lindsay was talking to me about it, and I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, The Outsider by Black Veil Brides. I'm like, they have a song called The Outsider? And she's like, yeah, it's a new single they wrote. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, Black Veil Brides got back together last year. And, because this is like 2017. Um, she told me Black Veil Brides got back together last year and wrote a new single called The Outsider. And I was like, oh my god, I need to listen to this right now. And then I did, and I fell in love with it. And then, I want to say maybe about two weeks after I heard The Outsider is when they released My Vow as the second single for Veil. And I fell in love with that one too. And then they released When They Call My Name, which I thought was going to be the last single for this because I didn't expect them to do four singles for Veil, but they did. I don't know how soon it was before they released Veil, but it was close to the release date of the Veil album that Black Veil Brides released the single, The Last One. But weirdly enough, Jade was the one who ended up telling me about that single. Because I remember him hit me up on Facebook one night and he asked me, have you heard the new Black Veil Brides single yet? And I was like, are you talking about My Vow? And he was like, um, no. And I'm like, then what are you talking about? The only singles I have released are The Outsider, When They Call My Name, and My Vow. And he was like, no, they have a new single out. And I was like, um, what is it called? And he said, the last one. And I still didn't know what he was talking about, so I was like, um, the last single they released was My Vow. And he was like, no, the song is called The Last One. And I was like, Oh, duh, now I get it. And before they had released the Veil album, I think in January 2018, I think, I know it was early 2018 when they released the Veil album. But I'm not sure if it was January or February. I think it was January, though. But when they released it, I thought my favorite song was either going to be The Last One or My Vow. It was not either of those. My favorite song from Black Veil Bride's Veil album ended up being Wake Up. But I also do love the last one, and When They Call My Name is a beautiful song. The Outsider is amazing. Our Destiny is great. The King of Pain is great. And My Vow is great. Ballad of the Lonely Hearts is great. And the last two tracks on the Veil album are the two songs that I've always had a weird relationship with. Because, I don't know, Throw the First Stone and Veil, and in parentheses, this is where it ends, um, I don't know. I mean, when I first heard Throw the First Stone, I was not impressed at all. Same thing with Veil, the title track. I did not think they sounded that good. And then I started thinking, okay, you know, maybe I just need more time with this entire album so I can get the idea of what they were trying to do with this comeback album because they had been broken up for a while before they released this album. So maybe I should just give it a chance. And now... The only song on this album I really don't like that much is Veil. It's okay, but it's not as good as the other ones.
But then, after they released the Veil album, they broke up again, so that Andy Beersack could write another freaking solo album for his Andy Black project. I was so pissed. I, I remember reading... I don't remember which one of them posted it. I don't think it was Andy. So it was either Ashley, Jinx, Jake, or Cece. One of them posted something on Twitter about Black Veil Brides breaking up again. And I got so mad. And then I find out from Lindsay that it was because Andy was going to write a second solo album for his Andy Black project that he does. But then, last month, they got back together and released the Night EP, which which has the songs Saints of the Blood and The Vengeance. I'm obsessed with the song Saints of the Blood. It's an amazing song. I also kind of like The Vengeance, but Saints of the Blood is amazing. It just sounds awesome to me. But that's all I can say about that. So now I will talk about Andy's solo project, Andy Black. Now this was a little different for me. I found out that Andy was doing his solo thing because of Lindsay. She was the one who originally had told me that Andy had a solo album called The Shadow Side, and I kept wanting to listen to it but didn't find time until one day when I was on the phone with her. I love Andy's solo stuff just as much as I love Black Bell Brides. Like, at first, when I found out, for like five minutes, when I found out that Andy was doing a solo thing, I was a little mad because I was like, wait, you should be doing things with Black Bell Brides. You shouldn't be doing anything solo. But then, I started listening to the shadow side, and I was like, Okay, you know, this actually isn't that bad. This is pretty good. But originally, before I listened to the Shadow Side album, I only knew the first three tracks Homecoming King, We Don't Have to Dance, and Rib Cage. My favorite song from this album ended up being Homecoming King. The rest of the songs weren't that... They weren't that appealing to me. They're okay, but I honestly think the Ghost of Ohio album sounds a lot better than the Shadow Side, even though I do like the Shadow Side album. But before he started releasing singles for the Shadow Side, he decided to do a cover of Frank Sinatra's song My Way and somehow made it sound better than the original, and I don't even like the original song. <laughs> and then he released Westwood Road, I guess, as the first single for Ghost of Ohio, and then he released the title track, Ghost of Ohio, and then The Promise as the last single, and then he released the whole album. This album was an interesting experience for me when I listened to the entire album of The Ghost of Ohio. My favorite song from this album ended up being a tie between Feast or Famine and Heaven. Feast or Famine sounds great, but Heaven is so beautiful because it's, it's obvious with the lyrics that Andy wrote the song Heaven about Juliet Sims, his wife. He, well, not about her. He wrote it for her, I guess you can say. Um,
Yeah, so I guess I would say out of the two solo albums that Andy has released for his Andy Black project so far, my favorite one out of the two would be The Ghost of Ohio. And my favorite song from it is Beast or Famine. So I guess... I guess now that I think about it, that would make my favorite song from Andy's solo stuff, Feast or Famine. Anyway, that's all I can say about Black Veil Brides and Andy Black. So, next week, I want to talk to you guys about a band that I just recently got into that has a few albums out now called Creeper. This is a very interesting band, but I will get into that next week. So this has been Master Salazar. I will see all my lovely subjects in my next video.